So every now and then we do see a game changer that pops up and without a doubt, this is a big one. This is a huge game changer here, the Redmi 10X 5G. And there's other models out there, but this is the particular one that I've got hold of here. And of course, this is my first time testing out a real stunner of a chip from MediaTek. And I can't even believe I'm saying that. MediaTek, stunning chip. Yeah, okay, just forget what you know about them, okay? What you thought about them, this chip, believe the hype, is really good for a mid-range chip. It offers 5G at seven nanometers, octa-core, five-core powerful GPU, delivering really good frame rates, really good thermals, and the battery life is shaping up to be very good. Now, what else have we got with this phone here from Xiaomi? Well, we have a typical Xiaomi great build quality, AMOLED panel, in-screen fingerprint reader, large capacity battery, fast charging, 48 megapixel camera. It's pretty much got it all, apart from band 20 for us LTE European users, and NFC this model lacks. But let's find out why I love this particular phone and why I say this is a huge game changer. So this particular unit, I did order this one here from Trading Shenzhen. It took a couple of weeks to arrive because there are some delays with DHL, so just bear that in mind. They're still having a little bit of difficulty there. Now they did also include a power adapter for me and this Type-C2 USB plug. So right here we do have a TPU case. Xiaomi has been doing this for a while now, including these cases, which is great. And this gives us our basic protection out of the box. And this one is the clear style here and it's TPU, so that means it's the flexible, not the hard case. So it offers good protection covering those buttons, and there we have the phone all in its uh, wrap, of course, so more on that one later. I'll just put it down here, and then you'll find just under here our charger. Now this is 22.5 watts is the maximum output for this one, standard size, and it's not bad. So of course I need that adapter. It's not an EU one. This is an import phone, the Chinese version. And then our Type-C2 USB cable, the standard high quality Xiaomi cable. So that's it for what we get inside the box there. All right, so onto our thickness and weight. So it's almost nine millimeters and weighs 206 grams. So yes, it's not actually the thinnest or the lightest phone around, but I think this is acceptable when you factor in the large capacity, or relatively large battery that it does have within it. So this phone does have an excellent build quality for the price that this is selling for. So it's around this particular model with the eight gigabytes of RAM, about 300 euros to import one in. This is from Trading Shenzhen, the guys that I got this one from. So the bezels top and bottom, you know, they're not the slimmest here, but they're actually not too bad. The curvature of the screen on the corners, however, is not quite as perfect as I would like it. I'm a little bit more squared would actually be nicer than this excessive rounded corners, but we don't really have too much of things being cut off with this. Uh, most games have moved, say, battery life percentages or icons and other important things a little bit inwards, so you don't really see too much of that. Now, there is a metal lip that is around the outside here of the screen, which is using Gorilla Glass 5, I believe it is, and the power button, easy access to this, and if I just tap this now, face unlocking, because I've got my tripod, in fact, overhead camera set up, there's no way I can show you this, but I've been testing it and it works very quick. Fingerprint reader, so let's just have a look. I'm gonna tap right here, and there we go. Unlocks very quick, and I've had no problems with it. The accuracy does seem very, very good with this one. Now, down the bottom here, we do have our Type-C port, of course, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Very good quality out of this, I can comment on. I have tested it out does sound very good. And the mic, of course, and single downwards firing speaker. Later on, I'll give you a sample of just how this sounds. So the frame all around the outside, I know a lot of people are gonna ask about this. Is it metal, is it plastic? It's plastic, okay? It has a paint finish to it that makes it feel like it could actually be metal, but trust me, this isn't actually metal at all. It's like a metallic paint they use, and it kind of fools a lot of people, I think, into believing it is metal because it's a very dense plastic as well. Now on the back, you can see our, what looks like quad cameras with this particular model isn't, okay? So we have three cameras, our main 48 megapixel sensor, which does pixel binning, takes a default 12 megapixel shot, eight megapixel ultra wide, and a two megapixel camera for our depth information for your portrait shots, dual tone LED flash. Now it is covered with glass, and it seems to be, I hope, a scratch resistant glass. It does seem to be though. And we get the curvature on the edges here of this glass. So it is very comfortable to hold this phone and I don't think it's too big in size. A lot of people are a bit concerned about that, but these phones are getting bigger. Yes, 6.5 inches, 6.57, sorry, almost 6.6 .6 inches, but it still feels 
very good in hand. Now up top, we do have an IR transmitter and our secondary microphone there. But yes, excellent build quality overall with this phone, typical Xiaomi. Oh, then the SIM tray, sorry, this does take two nano SIMs and a micro SD card, but you have to give up on one of those nano SIMs. Unfortunately, it's not that one that will take two nano SIMs and the SD card, micro SD card, which would have been better, of course. So this is a very good display. Xiaomi has in the last few phones I've been using of theirs and reviewed, really good AMOLED panels. I mean, they are very, very good. So we don't get those typical IPS problems that you often would see shadowing around the bottom, around where the uh, teardrop shape notches. Not here, not with this one. Now the maximum brightness is really good on this. It does top out to be just over 700 nits of brightness. We've got our DC dimming mode on here. So turning that off, you may possibly see this banding going up and down on camera. Now that is only on camera, but people that are very sensitive to low brightness, pulse width modulation flicker, this is basically a godsend that setting because having it on, you shouldn't see any flicker whatsoever with it. Now we do have our typical scaling, font size, and all that options are in there. But the interesting one, of course, is our color scheme. Now I prefer standard, but this is all personal preference. To me, on the auto mode does have quite a bluish tint. You can adjust that as well, our white balance, our color temperature saturated, so looking very oversaturated. Real world images do look very good on this, okay? You get deep blacks as well. It is overall, a screen I believe that is almost like a flagship level kind of screen that is in this. Sunlight legibility as well, very good because number one, it's AMOLED. They tend to fare a lot better than the IPS panels in the sun. And number two, because of that maximum brightness we have is really quite good. As for the display's gamma, well, it is approximately, I would say about 2.2 towards maybe 2.3. And this is very good. Jumping in now to our UI performance, and it is very good on this phone. It does feel very smooth and fluid. And yeah, you know I'm gonna say this, that occasionally with our full screen gestures, a little bit of a frame dip here. So a little bit of an animation lag here and there sometimes does happen. So I have noticed too that when I do swap over between some apps that I go maybe back home. Okay, I'll just do this, bring back home. And sometimes all of these icons could be missing for a split second, or in fact, all of the icons on the screen. It's as if MIUI just crashes for a split second and reloads. I don't know why it is doing this, and it's a bug I've seen now on the last three Xiaomi phones. And I'm sure the guys, the team, with so many different phone releases, are probably maybe a little bit overworked, but I hope a patch is coming through to fix that bug I have seen. And I'm sure it is work in progress, and they do know all about it. It could even be in the betas but I'm on a stable Chinese firmware here with this one, of course. So a lot of people do ask me now, what about the phone dialer? Can we record? No, okay? So we cannot record the calls with the stock application anymore because Xiaomi doesn't use MIUI's dialer and messaging app anymore. It is now Google's one, okay? So that's why we cannot do that. So overall, the performance is good, but I'm gonna show you some things in here now that are quite surprising to me. So let's take a look first at our wireless, and this is impressive it truly is we're getting speeds that are beating flagship phones here that cost two and maybe even three times more than this phone so look at this almost getting up towards 800 megabits per second with my wireless network and that's only reserved for flagships until now until this chipset okay minimum speeds they are almost as fast as the k30 pro and the Poco F2 Pro. They are really that good. So the wireless on this thing is impressive. Could be aided by the fact we have a plastic build to it, just meaning the reception there could be a bit better, but really well done. They have, you know, you've got to take their hats off to MediaTek. They have certainly stepped up their game and you can see it here with Antutu. This is uh, version eight. It's a very good score. This is beating the Snapdragon 765G. They have really taken it now to Qualcomm and saying, well, you know, we're improving and this is our, the best we can do for the price and it certainly is showing here. So Geekbench 5, again, a very good score for a mid-range phone, just like our storage. So take a look at this. When you look at these sequential writes and reads, they are high, okay? But random reads and writes, these are flagship level. Look at this. That random write is almost at 300 megabits per second and the reads, that is very, very quick. Again, flagship really performance there. So you do get around 110 gigabytes free on the first boot. 
and I did install this patch which optimized the performance, reduced system lag, and it does actually feel a little bit smoother. When I first used it, I noticed that it just, yeah, it was okay, but it seems that Xiaomi are just improving things. So camera two API support, this is typical Xiaomi now, level three, so look for later on for some Gcam ports, although with MediaTek, we may have some problems. It might be a little bit more difficult, but maybe the port um, for the Redmi Note 8 Pro could actually work. Now, I didn't expect to see this. Chinese ROMs do not normally have Widevine Level 1 certification, but Xiaomi does have it with this, which is very good to see. So that's it for our performance, and very good overall. It's just, I want to see that little bug and those bugs here and there fixed in MIUI. And it is MIUI version 11 we're on still, Android 10, and the security patch level is May 2020, which is good. So the audio quality from this one, I find that the loudspeaker is decent, it's good, but it's not as good as the Mi 10 Lite 5G that I reviewed, and also the Mi Note 10. It just doesn't seem to be quite as loud, and slightly different quality coming out of this loudspeaker. Not to mean that it is bad at all, you hear from the sample that it does have a bit of bass to it, it could be maybe a tad bit louder. The same for the 3.5 millimeter output, to me doesn't seem quite as loud as other Xiaomi models. But don't get me wrong here, the quality is actually very good that we get from a 3.5 millimeter analog. And especially for a mid-range phone, there's lots of options too that they give you. Bluetooth tech seems to be working fine as well with this. But here is that sample at 100% volume. Onto the gaming performance, so this has again surprised me here that the Dimensity, the 820 chip here, with its 5 core GPU is performing really well. Now, a very demanding and possibly very poorly optimized game is Shadow Gun Legends, which can really dip down the frame rate with some of the tech I'm reviewing, but it actually performs really good. A solid 60 frames per second, this is where it really did surprise me, in the game with the high settings applied. And it can even give you a very good frame rate on the ultra high settings as well. Now with the Snapdragon 765G that I reviewed, I was not getting this kind of frame rate. It was a little bit slower and sometimes dipping down to 30 frames per second, but this is absolutely really amazing performance for the price in terms of gaming. Now other games like Mobile Legends, for example, maximum settings, 60 frames per second, no problem, this is a very light engine, and the game of course looks really good. So what about if I step it up to something like, say, Call of Duty? Unfortunately, the chipset support here, while this phone is new, doesn't allow us to go over 30 frames per second due to a silly frame rate cap. I really wish that they would not do this. So this game is stuck at 30 frames per second on high settings, and okay, it's still playable, but I'm sure that once that cap is removed, it could probably do high settings also at 60 frames per second. This is a very capable GPU. And the thermals are excellent. After one hour of gaming, you can see that, okay, it gets warm, but this is acceptable. These temperatures are great. This is an eight, sorry, seven nanometer chip, and it's not really getting that warm. They've done a good job here, both MediaTek and Xiaomi with the thermals. So let's move over into our camera now. So we've got the 48 megapixel one times. We can go over now to the ultra wide eight megapixels. And then we do have two times digital zoom as well. And this one, the quality is actually all right. It's usable at the two times digital. And we also do have our typical other modes here. So portrait is there, night mode as well. And then moving to pro mode. So we do have a shutter rate that actually goes right up to 30 seconds. And then our ISO. Now this one goes up to 6,400. And there's even a pro mode for video too as well, which we don't often see. Now this does not come as a surprise considering the fact that Xiaomi has never put electronic image stabilization with the front facing cameras into play here. So if you intend to walk or run around, you will see it shaking all over the place. And it really does mean we kind of need a gimbal with this front facing camera. Now the quality I feel for 1080p front facing footage is actually pretty good, aided by the fact we do have now that better audio quality with that higher bit rate. So well done Xiaomi there for at least improving our bit rate. It's just now please, electronic image stabilization, 
with your next lineup of phones would be really great and if you can put it into say MIUI 12 as well updates would be even better for your existing phones. So this is a sample of the main 48 megapixel camera which can shoot 4K 30 frames per second. Our audio quality is a surprising 256 kilobits per second. So it does sound a little bit better than the typical 96 or 92 that we get. Now I have noticed that the electronic image stabilization doesn't seem to be quite as good or as aggressive as what we have with the Qualcomm powered versions. Could be down to just Xiaomi's optimization. They're relatively new now with this particular chipset. So I'm just gonna walk through this small jungle I have here, go down these steps and show you that stabilization again. Now this is our ultra wide video and the image stabilization, electronic image stabilization of course, not optical but just electronic, so much better. But the quality at 1080p and the lens and the smaller sensor does not look as sharp. Of course, a little bit more washed out here, but I will just demonstrate going up these stairs. Electronic image stabilization, looking good. You go through this jungle again. I really need, do need to clean my garden up and prune a little bit. Much better stabilization here. So yeah, this phone, wow, it, it has really changed things, okay? A big game changer. I can't wait until we get a European release of this. So what will Xiaomi be calling it? What will it be? Will it be a Redmi? Will it be a Poco? Will it be the Poco F2? We've got the Pro model, but will this be the, just the plain old F2? Maybe. We'll have to see what's going to happen there, or the F2 5G, or whatever you're going to call it. Now, absolutely hats off to MediaTek. I can't believe I'm even saying this. I mean, this is unbelievable, it really is. They have such a stunning chip. Look at those wireless speeds. That is flagship performance. You're normally paying double, even triple the price with other phones to get that kind of speed there. And even the storage speeds. Xiaomi's done it. The combination they've put into this phone. Very, very good storage. A great screen. It's a bright screen. You can see it in sunlight. And it offers great frame rates with your games. Very good thermals. It's MediaTek. Most people would say, okay, MediaTek gets too hot. Their first really decent chip from them I mean decent, is of course the Helio G90T that I reviewed in the Note 8 Pro. That actually offered really good performance and still does. It's a good chip, but this one is just in a league of its own. It is so good what they've done here. Now, no phone is absolutely perfect, okay? Where are the areas of weakness with this one? So, I have already seen that, okay, the cameras do need some optimization, I think. A little bit there. Video stabilization doesn't seem to be quite as good as the Qualcomm's and it could just be lack of software updates, optimization from Xiaomi. Maybe because of the new chip, they just need a little bit more experience with it. But, okay, the UI does have those little glitches, the occasional little lag that is, I don't think, hardware related. I think it's software because I'm seeing it with other phones there from Xiaomi. The other thing too, well, the loudspeaker, it's good, but it's not quite as good as the other models I've just recently looked at, but it is still very good audio quality we're getting with this one. Now, the build quality, a lot of people go, well, it's a plastic frame. And uh, I can actually just go and give this to someone in the street and I'm sure you could say to them, what do you think this phone's made out of? And they'll probably go, well, glass and feels like a metal frame. It is solid plastic here, but no, it is, it is almost fooling a lot of people to think it would be metal here. So there's that. And of course, the big one for if you are living in an area that needs LTE Band 20, then there's no LTE Band 20 support with this one or 28. And of course, we do not have uh, with this NFC. I don't know why this model doesn't have it. You've got to get the other 10X models 
to get the NFC, but so far, I mean, this is really good. Now, charge time, I've done a test now. It's about one hour and 25 minutes to fully charge this, which I think is very acceptable for what it is, but this is just offering so much, this particular phone here. So I will be back with a follow-up video giving you the exact battery life with my PC Mark fixed battery life test. More thoughts as well after using it for a full week. I just need more battery cycles to be able to give you that kind of information. So thank you so much for watching this review of really a game-changing phone for a mid-range class phone, and that is the Redmi 10X 5G model. I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye for now.